Hey everybody, I'm hanging out with my buddy Patrick and we are about to put a lithium battery in this old club car golf cart. So, 03, club car precedent. As you see it is how I bought it. And you told me that it hasn't even driven in two years. Is that maybe, right? Maybe even three years now. Wow. Patrick has already removed the old lead acid batteries and today we're going to put in a 48 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery that I bought from Signature Solar. Uh, I have already made a previous video about this battery that I'll leave a link in the description below as well as an affiliate link if you'd like to buy one. Uh, it helps out the channel uh, by using the affiliate link. Uh, so let's get to adding the, the new battery to this golf cart and see how well it works. This is the brand new EG4 battery from Signature Solar. It's a waterproof 48 volt battery. It has a 100 amp hour rating, 5.1 kilowatt hours. And the maximum discharge current is 100 amps. Now that is continuous and it can actually uh, do a little surge for a short period of time. Now sometimes these golf carts will surge beyond 100 amps. So I wanna make sure that this one battery will handle the surge of that motor on its own. Now potentially when you press on the accelerator and that surge happens for the inrush current, if that does cause the BMS to fault and shut down, then we'll know that it's not gonna be enough and we'll have to have a second battery or more powerful uh, system. But this is a factory club car and hopefully uh, this one battery is going to be able to handle the factory controller that's on board just by itself. This battery has a built-in Bluetooth function, so you can actually check out the state of charge right on the app on your phone. So this is just sitting in, just to get an idea, and it looks like this front edge here is going to be a little bit too high for the seat. We might be able to slide it forward just a little bit. So it's currently sitting on the two main frame rails. So we're gonna see if we can slide it forward just a little bit. So we are right on the edge. You wanna put that measuring tape on again? Well, yeah. So we have just a little bit of clearance and we are bumping up against the charging port. So potentially we might take that out, do our own thing with the charging. second one <laughs> <laughs> for the height right yeah. all right well with the with the front charging port out of the way we were really able to slide this forward so now there shouldn't be any trouble at all clearing nope none at all so that's gonna work these two wires would be for a 12 volt accessory uh, like the blinkers and the headlights they, these would have been tapped off of two of the six volt batteries. So in this case, you're going to need to add a 48 volt to 12 volt buck converter. So Patrick is holding a waterproof 48 volt battery charger. And this one is specifically made for lithium batteries. Now you can buy these at Signature Solar. They're waterproof. And in my opinion, this is a great way to go. There's a ton of extra space inside the golf cart now. So something like this could easily be mounted in any one of these areas. And what I would do, I would cut off the alligator clips. I'd put on ring terminals. So you have ring terminals direct to here. You can buy a panel mount outlet that's just like this. It'll have the screws on the backside, but I would cut this off put it on the panel mount and have that going through the wall with the charger always left inside the battery compartment that way you just run your extension cord over plug it in and you don't have to do anything with the batteries under the compartment all right we found a couple of scrap pieces of galvanized angle and so this will help uh, spread out the load so we're just kind of pushing that underneath there and they're just some random scrap pieces. And then we're gonna use a ratchet strap and let's tie this thing down. So 
So here's the main positive wire and Patrick has snipped off that old mess of a ring. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> that's how they did it. <laughs> now we're just cleaning this up. All right, so we're gonna try the eight gauge. But these are nice and thick and they don't tend to uh, wiggle loose after you crimp them. All right, so very surprisingly, uh, this little eight gauge fits on this wire. So I don't know if it's uh, That's surprising for me for the amperage that it's going to draw but really nice snug fit <laughs> So now that crimp's not going to go anywhere and then yank on it and make sure it doesn't come loose. That's it <laughs> You put a 200 pound gorilla on it. And <laughs> we're gonna find out if it's loose or not. <laughs> Now these ring terminals have a 5 16 inch di inside diameter hole and that is working for the uh, the machine screws that are supplied with this battery. We just finished wiring in the battery. Now Patrick is going to flip this switch. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, I want to find out what the surge is on this thing. So we have this uh, amp meter. All right, so we need to get our inrush. There it is. See that? Inrush current. It's in the bottom. So we'll just clamp that on there. And let's uh, floor it. Jump in. Go ahead, floor it. Oh. Reverse. <laughs> So that's 72.4. So let's try that one more time. You want to jump up here with me? Get, put some extra weight on it? Sure. Help. All right, so it says inrush, it's on zero. Floor it. Takes off. All right, so we had 92.7 amps for the inrush. Now remember, that's just when you floor it. That's the uh, when the rotor's not moving and it's got to get going. It's taking a lot of amps. So that's the surge. So that battery can surge more than 100 amps. It can do 100 amps continuously, which means we're not going to be uh, shutting down the BMS on this uh, battery anytime soon. All right, Patrick was asking me a couple of questions about what size charger to buy. These will vary in amperage. The higher the amperage, the more expensive the charger and the faster they will recharge the battery. But let's look at the use case scenario. This battery is a 100 amp hour battery. So if you, in theory, had a charger that was 100 amp rated, it could recharge that battery in just one hour. But that would be a big, expensive charger. There's no need for that. This battery pack will more than cover an entire day's worth of driving without running uh, dead on you. So you're just going to have to recharge it at night. So what I was saying is probably just getting a 10 amp charger, which would be uh, recharging this battery completely from dead to full in 10 hours. That's plenty for you because you're just recharging it at night. Now, if you do have some kind of use case scenario where you only have a limited window where you could have it plugged in, you might want to get a more powerful charger. But I think a 10 amp charger is plenty for a golf cart. All right, Patrick, what do you think? Awesome. It's lighter, a lot lighter. I mean, six six volt DC batteries, uh, golf cart batteries, deep cycle, lead acid, full of water, compared to a tiny, tiny, tiny little box. I mean, look at the look at the space that we gain. I mean, we played our cards the right way. We could put a nice cooler in there. <laughs> So Patrick, do you think you'll put the charger underneath, like I kind of yeah. described? Yeah. I'll have to get a charger, obviously. Uh, maybe we'll reuse reuse this port right here and make something work with that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, perhaps I'll put some blinkers on here and headlights, tail lights, with brake lights, and we'll be able to drive it down the road. Because <laughs> I do have I do carry insurance on this.
most awesome. All right, well, thank you, Patrick, for inviting me over and helping you with the golf cart. And if you are interested in doing any of this stuff, I will leave links in the description below to all the tools and parts that we used. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you, Dave.